Welcome to the Universe Inside Our Mind. I'm Dr. David Jubb. You've tuned in to an incredible show. Uh, it's all really about uh, being more in this timeless present. It's so amazing, you know, because lots of teachers, they sort of are talking at uh, uh, giving us instruction about this. And a lot of this instruction to me, I feel, is sort of, sort of coming from a heartfelt uh, place, but often not really um, a real living understanding of this. So we can, people can give an intellectual understanding, but are they really living this? Because the very first thing that I would say to you, lots of people have said, oh yeah, you've got to be present. Yeah, they've said this, you've got to be present, you know. But this talk which I'm doing today is about something else. This is not being about present. This is not being about being present. Because there's no such thing. This is not about the past. Because there's no such thing. This is not about the future. Because there is no such thing. The only thing that exists is this timeless. Now. Timeless now. This exists and this is forever and this is absolute. Time is temporal. Where is this present? Where did it begin? Where did it finish? How do we define it? Uh, persons and teachers who've taught people to be present, what the meaning of this is? Uh, the show that we're doing very much, um, the show that we're doing very much is about being in this timeless present. There's a, a, a beautiful song and um, I'm just going to sing it out and you're going to sing it out. Binya yebo! 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 Jumbo, Epe Jumbo, Kelema Jumeda, Kelema Jumeda, Kelema Jumeda, Kelema Jumeda, Ima Joda, Ima Joda, Ima Joda, Ima Joda. Oh, that's very good. Um, we happen to be filming this in the East Village. Um, in Greenwich Village here in New York. Uh, we have Alex behind the lens of the camera. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we have a bit of an audience here. So we're going to do this sort of in five minute or six minute sort of increments and things and we're going to have a little bit of a break. You guys are not going to get much of a break. But when we have a little bit of a break, we're going to be talking about what we've talked about. We're going to see what we can do to keep you on the edge of your seat. But um, for the most part, the very thing that we've said is that this show that we're doing here today is really more about being timelessly present timelessly being present. As you are timelessly present, it means you're living in heaven. Heaven exists as between, uh, heaven exists between two children who are playing. You live in heaven as you live as a child and as you live in this playful self, which is your original self. As we live in this playful self, we're in our original self. All things other than playful is not original. So as we live in this beautiful, playful self, within ourself, this is original. When someone's not playful, it's like, well, wait a minute, uh, what's up with this, you know? I mean, uh, well, what's the reason to be so serious for? I mean, you know, uh, we should do what we can to, to, uh, to, to feel more light in the body, to see in the mind's eye. As we feel more light in the body in ourselves, we can see more in our mind's eye. And um, so the very first thing that we've said is this show is about being more in our timelessness and that playfulness is as time, ordinary time, is suspended. The definition of playfulness and play is where ordinary time is suspended. Um, Having free time may not really be playful because that could be forced free time. Having free time by itself is not playful. Playfulness really is more a state of being. 
And this state of being comes about more as a result of being more timeless. So when somebody asks me how old I am, I always say, gee, I'm about one and a half. You know? Because when you're one and a half, you want people to know, hey, well, I'm one and a half, you know? Uh, and, and this body is about one and a half, really. But, but this I was never born. This I will never die. This I is not this body that's speaking to you. This voice is coming from the furthest reaches of outer space inside yourself. Um, so this body is not this I, it's am. Um, but this I is this, this eternal self. And this eternal self, which is the seat of your consciousness, is this beautiful empty space. And this is original. And this is the only thing about you which is absolute. And you know this. You are this. You know you are this. This is forever. And this is this beautiful, timeless present. So when we start to get into thinking, it's not this timeless present. Thinking, what is that? It's sort of like feeling, you know. Feeling, you know. All the time sort of feeling and fidgeting and, you know, all these sort of movements and things. This is, that's a chatter. This is called kinesthetic chatter. And it's an internal chatter. What other kinds of chatter there is? There's also a chatter where people are going rack, yak, 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 you know, inside. Yak, 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 yak. It's just continuous yak, 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 yak. This is also chatter. And then the other kind of chatter that exists is pictures. Pictures people make in their mind. Blah, blah. Uh, all these things that we do within ourselves cause us to other than be in this timeless now. This, which we're talking about, is the gap that we have between thinking. And if I could just say one more thing in this introduction. Uh, just like me, you, I'm sure, have gone many places. You've gone and you've listened to lots of people. You've read books and stuff. But I ask you, out of all the places that you've ever been in your life, of all the things uh, that are said and teachers that have come before you, probably the times that you've actually fundamentally changed has sort of been few. All those speakers and everything that's said and fundamentally when I examine where I've been, I have to say that lots of that out there didn't fundamentally change me. It didn't. Right? I can remember moments where I have been fundamentally changed. And when I examine the moments in my life where I've gone somewhere like you have today and listened and sat and listened, sometimes I was standing, you know, <laughs> sometimes I was sitting, and I remember the moments where I have gone somewhere and I was fundamentally changed forever. I could never be the same afterward. And I feel that you and I, there's something that we have in common, something universal that we share in our heart with each other. And I'll bet that in the moments where you also can have a recollection of places that you've been and where you've heard, listened to someone <clears throat> and you fundamentally got up and you go, oh my God, I was fundamentally changed. It was not because of what this person was saying. It's not because of what this person said. If you're like me and you fundamentally changed when you went somewhere, it wasn't because of what this person said. As I examine, and if you examine the moments where you've fundamentally been changed, it is because of what this 
person is living. Yes. What struck you the most, and certainly what struck me the most, was not what people really said, but what fundamentally changed me was what this person's living in themselves. This changed me. This has changed me. So it's all very well for someone to kind of spout all kinds of stuff, isn't it? But hey, are you living this? Can we feel you living this, what you're saying? This gap between thought that you are living is the very thing that has changed people in your life and as others have modeled something for you and I, this is the very thing that they modeled. They modeled this beautiful livingness in the gap. And in between the things spoken, I and I'm sure you have been fundamentally changed because of this, what's being lived in this gap. Anyway, we've got a really great show, all about living more in this timeless present. So this is Dr. David Job. This is the universe inside our mind. Stay tuned for some more exciting information coming up. Okay, we're back. It's so amazing, you know. Um, being in this timeless present, what is the meaning of this really? I mean, uh, you know, most of us, we care very much to be sort of more associated in life. Associated, the meaning of being associated in life is that you're moving toward things as far as what you're doing in your life. I'm moving toward, right? And I'm focused on the things within. And this is being associated. If I was focused on, gee, what I'm moving away from, you know, I want to get rid of that. I don't want that. Um, so moving away from all kinds of languaging and thinking and thought, which is, gee, I've got to get away from that, you know, is dissociated. So some moments, of course, there could be some usefulness of that, but you don't want to be going through your life like dissociated, right? You want to be more associated with the things you do. You want to be more in this timeless present. If I've focused on, I just simply have a, a beingness within myself that's moving me more t toward things, and I'm focused on things I have this inside, this is being more associated rather than focused on things out there and what I'm moving away from. So when I'm focused on things out there, that's dissociation. When I'm mo focused on moving away from things, this is dissociation. Some people can have spent one day totally going, oh God, I've got to get away from this, I've got to get away from this, right? Some people have spent three months thinking, oh, gee, I can't stand it, I've got to get away from that, I don't want this, I don't want that, I can't stand this, I've got to get over here, I've got to get going here. But, you know, some people spend three months, and some people spent a year, and some people have spent three years, and some people have spent, like, a long time, and their process and their thinking has been dissociated. So dissociation is more where you've all you've had thinking that's I'm moving away from, I don't get rid of, I'm pouring out. Um, this is dissociation. Some usefulness of being able to be able to dissociate, but being um, labelled sort of uh, dissociated in life, that's not good. We're going to be talking a bit more about this. Um, congruency. Who's how many people really are congruent? You are congruent as how you're feeling has been supported by what happened yesterday. And this moment is congruent if this is supported by what happens tomorrow. This means you're being congruent. Congruency is whatever behaviors that came before this moment is supportive of this moment and then whatever behaviours would come after this moment is also supportive of this moment. The only way we can tell congruency is that the, what happened before is parallel and supportive of your beingness present in this timelessness and what would happen after also is uh, in rapport and parallel. Then 
you're congruent. So if you talk about a beautiful rose being placed on the table, I'm using this as a metaphor, uh, but, and then I'm thinking I'm going to put a barker's nest right next to it. Everybody know what a barker's nest is? You know? Woof, woof! A barker's nest. Uh, you know, I put a rose on the table and then I put a barker's nest right next to it. It's sort of like, well, uh, this doesn't make sense. You know? But are people not doing things like that in their behavior? Are we saying something and then saying something else which is opposite? You know, congruency is what I've said and as I am here and as you are present in this timelessness has been supported by the moment before and it's supported by the moments after. This is the definition of congruency behaviorally. Is this helping? Is this helpful? Kind of like to define some of these things? Yes? Okay. Um, integration. As you're integrated. As you're integrated, you know you're integrated because all the parts are sort of more in harmony, you know, feel in harmony, things are in flow. Uh, lots of writers in the world, Chiksamahaley and other people sort of all write about flow and things. As you're sort of in flow, you're integrated, aren't you? As you feel interest, as you feel a sense of pleasure in yourself, as joy. Joy is a more powerful word than pleasure. A person could be feeling pain, matter of fact, from, from um, training, some training that you're doing, but you can feel joy. Joy is a much finer word than pleasure. Pleasure is just pleasure. But joy can be uh, even uh, sometimes that I weep and uh, there's a joy in the release, you know, a joy. So we could feel pain and yet have joy. Um, being integrated, being integrated means that there's something pleasurable and there's something interesting. Because you only are in, integrated in your being as you feel more interest and uh, you have joy. Is this making sense? Because if you don't have joy, the, uh, this, front, this frontal cortex gets neurologically inhibited, meaning it doesn't stay on. <laughs> uh, this left hemisphere gets neurologically inhibited, that means that your left hemisphere other than remains on. And when somebody's feeling averse, all they have is some of their right hemisphere and brainstem. And all the rest of the brain has been neurologically inhibited. So when, as one feels joy inside themselves, we feel more integrated. The chief component of integration and being integrated in life is coming from a sense of interest and joy. We're only able to get into our frontal cortex which is the ex executive guidance area. This is this area of our self which causes me to be able to go, well now wait a minute, that's a little bit too much there. Oh, oh wait a minute, that's not enough of this. And Oh gee, uh, maybe that's a, that judgment, that's a bit harsh. Uh, this executive guidance area, this is this faculty that all of us have to inspire creative influence of the future. We only can be able to be in this component of ourself to be able to um, guide the future um, and have this uh, component of ourself as we have interest. If you other than have interest, this frontal cortex is other than um, active and open. Left hemisphere is rather other than active and open. And there's just small configuration of the brainstem and right hemisphere that sort of works um, and uh, in, joy and interest creates integration. So, joy and integration create joy creates integration. Interest <coughs> creates integration. It integrates. Um, it's so amazing because uh, as you're sort of more in this uh, timeless present. There's ways we can tell this, isn't there? 
we could just sort of intuitively sort of tell how present somebody is versus how you know occupied they are, right? All of us have a great ability to be able to sense if somebody's sort of open. You know, if someone's open to you, when you connect with them, you can see they're open, and you know when the tape recorder is on play and record, and you know when that's nothing being recorded there, right? You know, as you've had a conversation, you connect with somebody, and you wait a minute, I'm not really being heard here at all. Uh, the reason is because there's stuff that's going on possible for us to talk a little bit about what is this that we could observe and sense. Uh, so when we come back we're going to be talking a little bit about what are some of the things that we could observe to get a sense that someone is more in this timeless present versus other than in this timeless present. This is Dr. David Jubb. This is the universe inside our mind. Stay tuned for some more exciting information coming up. Okay, we're back. It's so amazing, you know. Um, of course, all of us can really get a sense if somebody's more in this timeless present for you and they're listening and they're here versus many times over you connect with somebody and you go, oh my God, this person's not even here. It's like, where are they? Uh, wherever there's a beautiful emptiness and this empty space within ourself, uh, this is the most powerful listening one can ever have. The most powerful mode of your being for your life is to no longer have any value for what's going on inside. None. I mean, it falls silent. Silence is equivalent to self. <clears throat> As this has happened to you, you only have an interest and a care, a deep care and affection for everything that's said around you. And this is this timeless present more. It's where someone's not in their <clears throat> internal chatter. Like, you know, when, when you're talking with someone in there, you know, uh, not maybe much present there, is there? When you see the news, right, the news, the newscaster, she or he as she's giving the news, you know, um, it's pretty sort of stone face, isn't it? It's just like I introduced the show, sort of very, just straight on, you know. Um, the news is always sort of done this way, isn't it? Sort of, and we feel it's more associated, right? But what happens when the newscaster, like on Saturday Night Live, you know, they're just going like, you know, uh, <laughs> you never see a newscaster, you know, on the ABC or whatever, you know, I mean, saying, uh, doing this sort of thing. Uh, when you set up a blink monitor on a um, aircraft, the major responsibility of getting the aircraft off the ground is the captains and the co-pilot you know and the navigator and things you know at second but as the pilot this is your responsibility to get this aircraft off the ground and on takeoff and on landing when we have blink monitors monitoring blink rate the captain she or he hardly blinks at all whereas the co-pilot and the uh, navigator they could be blinking, blink, 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 but the, the pilot is hardly blinking at all. All movements and things of this nature um, and the frequency of the movements can cause you to feel if a person is more timelessly present or not. The more movements and things and fidgeting and movement and all this sort of stuff, the less timelessly present the person is for you. Um, so that's uh, something that we can really be able to get a, t a sense of this is uh, how still relatively is this person as you connect and how much are they fidgeting and all this sort of thing um, so that's one thing another a way we could tell is the verb tense that someone uses when they're talking about being here uh, this is really great or they talk about things being that over there or I will or I haven't and using verb tense other than being in this timeless present. So we can listen to verb tense and we can get a little bit of an idea as far as actions are concerned. Is this person more about what's in this timeless present now or something in the past or the future? You know, uh, some people's future they have a picture of is so bright and big and their present is sort of like, oh, there's sort of nothing happened much here. Uh, and the past is very bright 
person's living in the future and they're living in the past. Make this ever present bright and disappear the past and shrink the future to be just a little sort of light out there somewhere. You know, just. Um, so we can get a bit of an idea how uh, uh, present tense somebody is sort of more through verb tense. And the other primary way that we can get a little bit of an idea of how timelessly present a person is, is how, uh, how much is this person inside their center of gravity? Because the more you sit with an arch in your back with your shoulders slightly back and your heart out, chin pulled in just a little bit, eyebrows raised, weeny little bit, you know, a uh, very inner smile, maybe not anything much discernible on the outside, but you've got this beautiful inner smile inside. <clears throat> this is a posture of being more associated in life. But the more that I start to go outside my base of support, the more dissociated, the more, if I was like this, but I have my head more like this, you know, part of me's more associated still, but a part of me sort of like relaxed and not as present. Um, it's beautiful to be able to be dissociated, but not all your life, you know what I mean? And there is a benefit to being dissociated and a benefit to being associated, you know? But it's better to be more associated in your life than be going around being dissociated. Better be more congruent so that what you've done in the past is supportive of this moment and what you're doing here now is supportive of the future and the future is supportive of this it means you're congruent. So, um, but keep your shoulders back more. It's so amazing actually that when people ask, who are the attractive people in the room? You know, and everybody gives everyone else a rating sort of thing. It's so amazing, matter of fact, that actually there's one common denominator in what causes us to feel more attracted to another person. Did you know what this is? A slight arch in the back. When someone's sitting and they have a little bit more of an arch in their back versus someone sitting like this. You know, uh, pretty simple, isn't it? Put your shoulders back. Put your, uh, uh, you know, and this is sort of like a lived sort of a thing, not static, but a lived kind of a dynamic. You know, it might feel a little bit strange because we've been so used to sort of putting our shoulders uh, forward and, um, you know, and this sort of thing. But anyway, do what you can to be a little more uh, associated yourself more in life and, and, and do consider the posture that you have because when you call people on the phone, you're going, yeah, what's up, you know, uh, or something like that. Anyway, um, I hope that you've enjoyed this show and that I've sparked your imagination and curiosity um, to learn more. Anyway, this is Dr. David Jubb. This is the universe inside our mind. Stay tuned for some more exciting shows coming up.